Do you recall a while back when I did videos on Academy 2024, and one in particular was about taking KDE Neon, that distro, it doesn't really act like a distro, provided by the KDE project that really just serves as a testing ground for the KDE software. Yes, there are users that do use it, but most people don't recommend it, and it's not really like anything that a serious amount of people use. And then a building off of that model and adapting it into a thing that sort of makes it like the premier way of using KDE. Not diminishing what is available on things like Kubuntu or Fedora KDE, but providing something directly from the KDE project that gives you exactly what they want from KDE. Now, on the GNOME side, you may recall a project called GNOME OS. And whilst it's called GNOME OS, it's the same thing as KDE Neon, where it's not really like a distro or an operating system in the sense that you'd actually want to go and use it. It's a GNOME testing ground, and it's a really good GNOME testing ground because what you get is GNOME and nothing else. You have a great environment for testing GNOME. But what if you took GNOME OS... Oh my god, I really need to fix this. What if you took GNOME OS and then built off of that and made it the premier GNOME experience? And this is exactly what Adrian Vovd of GNOME is working on. A desktop for all. I would like to turn GNOME OS, GNOME's homegrown distro for testing and development of the GNOME desktop, into a daily drivable general purpose OS. Immutable or atomic Linux distros have been gaining popularity in recent years. I generally use the term atomic. There are small instances where immutable does make sense, but regardless, in part due to their tangible benefits for user experience. I think those benefits are kind of debatable. They're getting better now that more software is being available on Flatpak. There is definitely benefits in the update model though, and not having to worry about package updates breaking and things like that. I wanted to improve on that, so in 2018, I got involved by starting Carbon OS, my niche little Linux distro with a singular goal. Build an OS that makes the Linux desktop usable for non-enthusiasts. And whilst he did start with that niche little project, he realized that maybe that wasn't the best approach for it. Maybe there was something that basically did most of the work for him. And with it being Atomic Gnome, you're probably wondering, okay, but how is that any different from something like Silverblue, for example, which is, for the most part, basically just vanilla Gnome with a different wallpaper? Don't worry, we will get into that a bit later. You, me, the author of this post, we are all Linux enthusiasts. Yes, even if you just started using Linux, like, a week ago. Yes, even if you're just using it in a virtual machine, and yes, even if you just use something like Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL. If you are watching a Linux YouTube video about GNOME OS, something most people don't even know exists, let alone care exists, you are a Linux enthusiast. I'm often left pondering, why should we enthusiasts get to enjoy all the benefits of FOSS and the Linux desktop, but the people who don't know, don't care, or simply don't have the time to be enthusiastic can't? I think of my friends and family. They don't deserve mistreatment by tech companies any more than we do. Many of them love the idea of Linux and agree with our values. Most of the people I know don't even know what Linux is, but hey, if you surround yourself with people who know about Linux, that's cool. I guess amongst gamers, it is certainly growing in popularity, but decided not to stick with it after trying it. They're interested, but just not interested enough to overcome our barriers to entry. They don't care about packages or codecs or drivers or patents or licenses. To be fair, most Linux users don't care about patents either. That's how we have a lot of the software we have, or all of these things that have become something we need to deal with as Linux enthusiasts. I believe that many will start to care about these things once they join our communities like we all did, but right now, they're just not joining. I think the ultimate goal shouldn't even be to get people to care about a lot of these things. The end goal should be most people don't even have to think about them, and then people who want to understand their system have a pathway 
to become developers and packagers and really care about the in-depth part of their systems. Obviously, software compatibility is always going to be a fairly big problem. It's become less of a problem now that a lot of software people rely on has just become web applications, which I don't like web applications, but for the sake of cross-platform compatibility, it does make things easier, right? Like if everything you do is in a browser, if you have a browser, you're pretty much gonna be good to go. And there are other things that are always just kind of confusing, like the way we install software, traditionally done through a command line interface, but this is slowly be moving into more of a graphical one where the command line's basically just used if something goes wrong. Preferably, nothing goes wrong though. Now, what he wanted to do and what he still wants to do is provide something where Hopefully everything just kind of fits together. Now initially, that was going to be Carbon OS, and that sort of acted as a testing ground to answer some of the things that he wants from a system like this. The OS should use stock GNOME and pre-install only stock GNOME apps. Why GNOME? They like GNOME. Fair enough. Doesn't matter what your opinion of GNOME is, the point of this is, it's the GNOME OS thing. Now, being pure stock GNOME, this does make it hard to have a distinct brand identity, but this was a permissible side effect for me. I would even argue for the goals of the project might even be a benefit because even something like Fedora still has like a little bit of Fedora modification to it. The most obvious thing being a Fedora wallpaper. So if this is something that is supposed to be GNOME and only GNOME, making it as pure as possible just makes sense. Now being an immutable system, application installation is still going to be important because you can't account for every single use case and include every application in the image, otherwise the image is just going to be way too big. You could technically do it, but it's just a giant waste of space. So flat packs should be the main way that applications are distributed. Flat packs are a cross-distro solution. Unlike another solution, like Snaps, for example, which technically will work across different distros, as long as you're willing to have parts of the sandbox break because it relies on some custom changes in Ubuntu. Flat packs are also sandbox, which I know a lot of people just don't really care about, but as they get better, as portals improve, we will eventually get to a point where applications work like they do on Android, where you can provide an application with permissions and then reject them whenever you want to. And Flatpak also allows for proprietary applications. Now, Snap also does as well, but certain distros like Fedora relegate those packages out into an extra repo because of licensing and patents and other dumb things that I don't want to get into today. And many users rely on this software, and if not rely on the software, just want it for their average day-to-day -day use case, for example, Steam. I know some people don't care about gaming, but I've said it before, if I couldn't game on Linux, I would not daily drive Linux. It should be robust. The OS should be difficult to break on accident, and in the rare event that it breaks, the user should be able to trivially roll back and keep using their device, especially when updates are involved. Updates must be bulletproof, and people shouldn't have to think about them. This applies to basically every atomic Linux distro at this point. It doesn't necessarily apply to a regular Linux distro. Yes, things like ButterFS do exist, but it's not a perfect solution. Immutable. Every copy of the OS should be identical. This makes it more robust and debuggable. This is one of the few contexts where using the term immutable does make sense in the context of an atomic distro. The image itself is immutable, and every user who installs it gets the same identical copy of it. That makes sense. If a feature is missing, then that's something the OS has to take responsibility for. It's not a misconfiguration on the user's part. Now, obviously, if it's a missing application and it doesn't fit within the core set, yes, that is a misconfiguration on the user's part. This is different from the popular hybrid immutable model, which still allows the user to install packages. In my opinion, allowing package overlays disincentivize the development of proper permanent solutions for missing OS functionality, since users can just rely on adding an overlay. 
Ultimately, the need to install packages to work around issues just ensures that nobody uses hybrid immutable distros immutably, which curbs the benefit of immutability, while at the same time subjecting the user to the extra sharp edges immutability introduces. Basically, what you're doing with package overlays, at least from the author's perspective, is you're taking an atomic distro or an immutable distro and removing any of the benefit of it, so just using a regular distro in a more complex way that takes longer to start and longer to update because when you update, all of those overlays need to be applied again to the update and it's just not worth the effort. Now, I don't necessarily agree. I do think overlays are valuable in certain contexts. There are some use cases you just can't cover in the general image, but most of them should be done. So in the context of focusing on improving the core, I guess that's fair. Secure. The OS should leverage available platform security features like UEFI Secure Boot and TPM, and new software techniques like SystemD HomeD to better balance user convenience with the security and privacy benefits of encryption. At some point, I should actually do a video on SystemD HomeD. I don't know why I haven't yet. And of course, it will be... Modern using modern technologies. Wayland, Pipewire, XTG portals, and so on. If you think any new distro is going to come out and not focus on this technology, you are delusional. Unless it is specifically existing for the purpose of not using modern tech. It should offer the latest GNOME releases to those who want it. It should also balance innovation against the fact that newest doesn't always equal best. This is something that was also brought up in the KDE discussion as well. Sometimes the latest releases has regressions, so maybe it's not always a good idea to force the user onto the absolute cutting edge version. Flexible. The OS should be easy to adapt to the variety of form factors that GNOME supports. Desktops, laptops, tablets, phones, and it should be easy to make versions optimized to run on specific hardware. And finally, opinionated. Every option we introduce is a decision a user has to make. This can be a bad thing, especially if the user is not an enthusiast and doesn't have the necessary background knowledge to make their decision. Now you can definitely go way too far with this and end up building something that works for the person who designed it and maybe a couple of the people but it's too opinionated to really be a proper good solution that people want to adapt like if you're going through this effort and building this solution you don't want it to be something that only gnome developers want to use because you've effectively just made the exact same thing again. Now, it took him a while to come up with all these goals, and doing so got him involved in GNOME, the SDF project, in SystemD, and in GNOME OS. GNOME OS, which basically does a lot of the things that he already wanted, so why is he going ahead and making his own thing? Why make Carbon OS when you basically have most of it here already? The only real difference between GNOME OS as it currently stands and the Carbon OS project he was making before is the current GNOME OS just isn't intended for mass adoption. But that doesn't mean it can't be modified, that doesn't mean it can't be adapted and used as a base point for building something off of that. And there has been interest in the GNOME project in doing something like this for a very, very long time. This is a blog post from 2010, basically saying, hey, why don't we go and make like a GNOME distribution for regular people to go and use? And the Academy Talk inspired him to finally write this blog post. If people are open to the idea, maybe we should do the same in GNOME. GNOME OS already has the right core architecture, maybe I could work to expand its scope. Now, whilst there's some interest within the GNOME project, you cannot forget about Fedora Silverblue. Silverblue is basically, for the most part, what this project is. It's pure GNOME, it's immutable, atomic, whatever you want to call it. Yes, it does have overlay packages, which the author isn't a fan of, but what else is actually different? Now, the author did post about this over on Mastodon. Firstly, focus on UX over FOSS purity. So stuff like codecs, NVIDIA drivers, etc. should work out of the box. 
This is one of the reasons why I really don't like recommending anything that's part of the Fedora project to a new user. This is something that will really trip them up. Also, as mentioned, lack of ability to overlay packages, which in my opinion will force innovation in the immutable space. I don't necessarily agree because it's the same logic of Fedora completely dropping the GNOME X11 session when the GNOME project fully admits that it's not ready yet and forcing that change, all it does is basically hurt users. Now, is it as big of a deal in this case? No, not really, because you still have things like Distribox and Flatpak is getting better and there's more applications available, so it's not as bad as that original idea, at least in my opinion. Also, some subtle but fairly important technical junk. Why did GNOME OS choose SystemD Sys Update over Boot C? Firstly, they use SystemD, and SystemD Sys Update is deeply integrated into SystemD. It just makes sense. And since they don't have a package manager, the whole being able to overlay things and all of that stuff just isn't really relevant anyway. It enables UKI's secure boot and TPM backed encryption of data partitions. Boot C has also started offering this, but at the time the decision was made, this was simply not the case. And if it works, it works. There's no point going back and changing out to another system when the current one seems to do everything you want anyway. This is not worth the effort. Also some fairly important data handling stuff. Bootsy is designed to share the file system with your actual user data. This has repercussions. If you want to encrypt your data, you have to encrypt the OS too. If the OS is truly immutable like GNOME OS is, the only thing you get by encrypting is worse performance. If you're not using overlay packages, why would you encrypt the immutable core? There's no reason to do so. Also importantly is if you have too many files in your home directory and fill up enough of the disk, there won't be enough space left over for Bootsy to install any more system updates. This is relevant to uh, regular distros as well and one of the many 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 reasons I really encourage having your root on a separate partition. And honestly, I might start recommending putting your Flatpak directory in a separate partition as well. It also makes it harder to implement a factory reset feature, and even when implemented, it'll be less secure. With this update, you can do a secure wipe of your system just by discarding the encryption keys and marking the root partition as deleted. At that point, there's no chance of recovering any data. On the next boot, the OS detects that it doesn't have a root partition, so fresh encryption keys are generated and a new root partition is created. With boot C, since the file system is shared, the best you can do is just delete the data folders within the running file system. This just marks space as available, but it doesn't actually delete any data. This means the data is still there and easily recoverable by various tools. Also, sys update, I cannot confirm this, but this is what is being said here is generally a less complicated solution and our needs just aren't complicated. And the author wants to clarify there's nothing wrong with the Boot C solution, it's just not the best thing for what they're trying to do with this GNOME OS thing and then turning it into a generic, you know, distro that people actually want to run. So here's a question for you. Do you think there's actually any value in providing a distro like this, or do you think the things like uBlue effectively already serve that function and this is just another distro for the sake of another distro? I'd love to know. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes to Libera Bay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and you've been gnomed.